Hello, hello, and welcome, my fellow pining, whining, and crying sims. <laughs> this fake so fun. So, imagine tiny, tiny me on Christmas four years ago. At least I think it was in 2019. I have no fucking clue, to be honest. But imagine me sitting there under the Christmas tree. It's probably not snowing outside because, well, climate change. So, imagine me opening up this suspiciously comic book shaped present and oh, what is that? A comic book? <laughs> no way! It's not like I've been wanting this thing since I saw that fucking Insta story DC put that entirely spoiled me for the end. Nah. And now you're probably thinking, uh, whoa, 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 what the fuck actually? Get to the fucking point. Uh, like, okay, all right, no need to be rude, Jesus. <laughs> Batman White Knight is a comic book written and inked by Sean Gordon Murphy, coloured by Matt Hollingsworth and lettered by Todd Klein. The story is basically that the Joker takes a bunch of magic pills and turns sane, then he fucking destroys Batman through, and you guessed it, politics. Hell yeah. It came out in 2018 and was pretty well received. So well received even that it spawned the spin-offs Batman White Knight Presents Von Fries and Batman White Knight Presents Harley Quinn. And it is apparently the first part of a trilogy, I think. Uh, the other two parts are called Batman Curse of the White Knight and Batman Beyond the White Knight. Also, White Knight Presents Generation Joker just came out, I believe. I don't know, man. It's a lot. Also, I get most of my info off of Sean's Insta because Wikipedia? Who is she? What you need to know is that the comic was so massively popular that there is now a fucking name for the alternate universe that Murphy has created, and that there are and will be works from other authors as well in that Murphyverse. But I personally have only read White Knight and the first three issues of Curse of the White Knight. I've been wanting to get my hands on the rest for ages now, but I can't afford that shit, really. I mean, have you seen the prices for comic books and graphic novels? That shit is wild. Liking Murphy's work here, I'd also like to read some of his other stuff, like The Plot Holes or Punk Rock Jesus or something like that, but as I said, no money, wah 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 wah. As you could already see, I decided to make my very own comic. Not an entire comic book though, just one page, because contrary to popular belief, I'm actually not completely crazy, I know, wow. The idea was that I'd try to emulate Murphy's and Hollingsworth's style because I knew that I could learn a lot from them, and also White Knight has just been a huge inspiration to me over the years. I was just obsessed with this thing, there needn't be more reasons. Now let's talk about my approach to this whole project. To get into the style a bit, I pulled out my copy of White Knight once again and very, very carefully, because I don't want to hurt my baby, took photos of a few panels that I found suitable for my skill level and copied them into my sketchbook. Now this process was extremely fun because working with fineliners is just always a treat for me and for a second I even considered doing my comic page traditionally. But then I didn't because what? Do I look crazy to you? Come on, we already covered that, keep up. Next, I try to draw a few of my OCs in the style. In my opinion, it doesn't look very good here because I did it with pencil and some things kind of smudged, but Gareth and Cedric are acceptable, I guess. Then I needed an idea for my comic, of course. My guidelines for finding something were that the scene had to include smoke and blood, because that shit just looks fucking godly in Murphy's style. Jesus. I struggled a little with this, but in the end I chose a moment from the story I'm writing right now called Once Again, The End. Basically what happens is that the company that most of my OCs work at gets set on fire and then my main character, the dumb fuck that she is, runs into the archive of that company to save a bunch of important files. Another OC of mine, Larry, also a dumb fuck by the way, runs after her then because she is stupid and he doesn't want her to die in there. I chose this scene because in true Murphy fashion it's very dramatic and includes people almost dying. Unfortunately it also depicts a huge fire and… oh boy. Thankfully, I have a lot of references for this because of Azrael's flaming sword in Curse of the White Knight and just generally things constantly exploding in this series, but still, I already know that it will be a bitch to draw that many flames in this style. Next up, I moved over to Procreate and looked for brushes that I could use. Now I know that what I'm doing is basically sacrilege because our lord and saviour Sean Gordon Murphy works traditionally with actual inks and trying to recreate it digitally is not paying proper homage to the original stuff, but... I'm really lazy, okay? As I said, Murphy uses actual ink, which means that my brush needed to be pretty natural with some skips and texture to it. 
In the end, I chose the dry ink brush, but now that I'm done, I think I should have used something smoother and just added some jitter, but whatever. For the colouring, I couldn't quite find something that worked well because I went to Matt Hollingsworth's website and it said that he worked with, and I quote, Photoshop along with watercolours, salt and rubbing alcohol on watercolour paper for this comic, which um seems hard to recreate and procreate. I could have probably done a somewhat convincing job if I was good at creating brushes, but alas, I am not, so I just used the gouache instead. I made my canvas 6 by 9.5 inches because after some research I figured out that it must be the size of the comic books I own. I also set the DPI to 400 and put my colour profile on CMYK since that is what you work with for print, I suppose. I don't know. I don't print. But now that I had my canvas, I made a rough sketch of the layout I wanted my panels to have. I had already done this in an even rougher sketch in my sketchbook, but that wasn't fully developed yet, so I made a few tweaks here and there through the process. Now doing this is a big struggle of mine because you have to get a good flow to the panels and the text so the reader will find their way through the story easily. Meaning you have to pre-plan where your text will go and have to take all kinds of stuff like angles and shit into account. I don't think I did the best job at that here, but it turned out fine for the fact that I'm not very experienced in comics. If you struggle with this like me though, but want to make comics, I can very much recommend this channel here. I've been subscribed to Walter Steel for ages now, even though I don't do comics often, because there's also just a lot of general art advice in there, and the videos are pretty well made. Check it out if you want help with literally anything comic or webtoon related. After drawing in the panels with the help of the drawing guide, I went through White Knight and my three issues of Curse of the White Knight and took pictures of anything that might come in handy later. Except for one or two things, I found everything that I needed for my own comic. Smoke, blood, people screaming, people coughing, file cabinets, tables, all that stuff. I made myself this album in my gallery so I could find everything easily and take it into Procreate as references. For the one panel, I even took a really shitty photo of my own hand. Now, this is just a general thing I and most artists do, but I was happy to find out on Murphy's Insta that he also takes photos of himself for reference. It just reminded me that even big industry artists like him can't do everything from scratch and have to use references just like us common peasants. Now, I had my canvas, I had my brushes, I had my panels, I had my references. It was time for the actual work. <laughs> The sketches took for fucking ever. For fucking ever, my guy, I'm telling you. I mean, just, just fucking look at this. I started this thing in fucking March. March, can you believe that? Because I cannot. What's even worse about the fact that this took me a whole fucking year is that it means that I've been working on the story I'm writing for over a year now. And it's not that long. Fan fiction authors take a week for what I've been doing. <laughs> But back to the topic. As you can imagine, this didn't take a year because I only drew three lines every day, but instead because I struggled with fading motivation due to the high difficulty as opposed to my mediocre skill level. I took long breaks in between each work step, and in general most of the time spent away from the project was due to the sketch, frustrating me to no end. As you might have seen, I also didn't stay fixed on all the ideas I had in the beginning. For example, somewhere during sketching I added two new panels. I don't remember if this was just an aesthetic thing or if I had actually forgotten to include a line of text, but knowing me it was probably the latter, yeah. I also scratched the idea of Larry from the upper panels running into the scene in the middle because, well, frankly I just couldn't draw the pose. I tried like four times and just couldn't manage to do it, even with references, so I gave up in the end. This once again shows that even if you can always use references, you still need some basic understanding of how the human anatomy works. And apparently I just don't have enough of that yet. <laughs> well, anyway, let's move on from the sketch because that shit pains me and let's talk about the line art. Yay, more pain. <laughs> so, Sean Gordon Murphy's line work is honestly just fucking godly in my humble opinion. His lines are dynamic, graphic, and fluid in a way that sh <laughs> what the fuck? His lines are dynamic, graphic, and fluid in a way that just makes me ogle at each page of this goddamn book over and over again. You really don't know how often I pull it out of the shelf just to look at it. Just to take in all the little details that I missed the last 20 times I read it. Okay, 20 might be a bit over the top, but I reread this thing at least once or twice a year. No joke. 
As I said, I haven't had the chance to read much of Murthy's other work, but here's a few key things about it that I learned from Beyond the Bleed's video about him. Short side note, Beyond the Bleed is this amazing channel about comic and manga artists that I found while researching for this video. So if you're interested in artsy stuff or just learning more about the artists behind the media you love, I highly recommend you check that channel out. I very much enjoy its content. The accent is also a big plus for me. <laughs> Anyway, as I was saying, the key components that stood out to me as particularly Murphy, so to say, are eyelashes, cheekbones, high collars, he loves those, huge and intricate fucking vehicles. Watch any interview with this guy and you'll soon see that he loves this kind of stuff. And last but not least, just hot fucking characters, man. Like, what right does this guy have to make me go a wooga so hard? Like, what? <laughs> My dumb ass really out here simping for the two pixels of Two Face somewhere in the background. Like, <laughs> Ahem. all I'm saying is, I really like Murphy's art style. I mean, just look at this. The facial expressions are just so goddamn lively, and the action scenes. God, the action scenes. Man. I got most of the superhero comic books I read during my time from the library because, as I said, that shit is expensive as hell. So since I only read what my library had, it was only the most popular stuff that had come out in the past few years. And I gotta be honest with you, for most of those comic books, I didn't enjoy the arts that much. I came to find that a lot of the mainline DC stuff at least, I didn't read much else, often had kind of stiff line art. Like, no shade on the artists here, but it often felt very business oriented, very clean cut, which is probably why I enjoyed Murphy's work so much when I first read White Knight. It's not like his line work is messy, but as I said, it has this fluidity to it. Which is why I had big, big problems with trying to recreate it. See, I've got this problem with having way too stiff line art and I've been trying to work on that for ages now. It's one of my biggest flaws as an artist, in my opinion, and I'm currently still trying to get a looser art star. However, this made it very difficult for me to work on this project because I was always trying to strictly follow the references I pulled up from Murphy instead of just going with the flow like he probably does. This anti-intuitiveness is what led to the line art also taking ages to finish. But hey, I did finish it at last. At some point you kind of start figuring out the little things that make working much faster because you don't have to pull up a reference for every single line. The line on top of the hair is thicker than on the downside of the strands, there's always these lines along the cheekbones, smoke is just the same shape layered on top of itself over and over, you know, stuff like that. Don't worry, I'll stop talking about line art in a second, but there was this one incident that I just need to mention. So, I was lining, as you do, and I wanted to look at my battery. Something that often happens when I try to do that while drawing is that I procreate things I want to colour drop and I end up with my entire canvas filled with whatever colour is selected at that moment. So this isn't a huge problem, I just undo and that's that. Normally. Not this time though. So essentially the same thing happened. I tried to look at my battery and instead of getting into the menu I colour dropped black into one of my three line art layers. Naturally I wanted to undo and move on but I just couldn't. Procreate just entirely froze up for some reason and I ended up having to go into my time-lapse recording, taking a screenshot and using those four pixels the recording has to redraw an entire layer. That was kind of shitty. Moving on. Before I added colour, I put in the speech bubbles. I don't remember why I didn't do that after the colouring, because that is the order you normally work in, but whatever. It doesn't matter. Now, speech bubbles are an art in themselves, and there are many things you need to take into consideration with creating them. Since I didn't have a clue about any of that, really, I looked on YouTube for a tutorial and found this wonderful series by the channel Comic Craft. I can very much recommend it to anyone who does comics on Procreate or wants to learn about lettering and all in general. It's straight to the point and very insightful. Link in description. Writing the script in retrospect, I can confidently say that the lettering was actually the most fun part of this entire project. I'm not kidding. I'm not entirely sure why, but I think there's just something very satisfying about seeing your comic with actual word balloons for the first time. It looks very official, I suppose. Like, you don't know the joy I felt when I was done with the balloons and could look at my full comic like that. I pulled it up again and again whenever I didn't have anything else to do and just looked at it because it made me feel so professional. Yeah. 
I'm a little kid sometimes, but that was great. <laughs> and now that I was done with the line art and the lettering, I could do what I had been looking forward to the entire time, colouring. And it wasn't as fun as I had hoped. You see, the thing with the colouring in White Knight is that all the colours are very desaturated. You know, you don't actually notice this when reading because they look more intense next to the black shading and I actually only realised when I went to colour pick myself some shades for myself. What is that sentence structure? We don't know. But on my own comic it was very noticeable and looked super ugly. One of the reasons for this is that I actually didn't go ahead and shade much in black at all. You might have already realised this and wondered if I had just forgotten to shade, but here's the real reason. I initially wanted to do the blacks last, but then I decided to fuck it and just don't do them at all. Because honestly, in the end, I was so exhausted by this thing that had taken a whole fucking year already that I didn't want to invest any more time in it than necessary. I mean, if I had just been quickly filling in the blacks, okay, alright, I could have done that, but I already knew that this would be super difficult for me, because to shade like that, you need a really deep understanding of light and shadow and the human face and clothing folds and all that jazz, so yeah. I just gave up. And that is okay. Sometimes you just need to realise that it's fine to work within your own limits. You don't always need to be stepping out of your comfort zone. It's okay. I do really want to further my understanding of lighting and shading, don't get me wrong, but I decided that this project just should rather be finished sooner than later and was not the place to do that. And I'm honestly surprised to say that I'm fine with that. So yeah, the colours look a teensy bit dull, but that's okay. Talking of dull, the background suffered in that same vein. I'm already not very experienced in backgrounds and I swear to god, without Procreate's perspective tool I could just not have done this. But I'm chill about it, it's fine, they just look boring now, it's okay, whatever, let's move on. Let's actually go for the finishing touches now. Since Murphy adds these larger areas of black with a big brush, I used the standard Procreate brush La Paruna to get some of that nice texture with the white of the paper still shimmering through in some places. To get that right, I actually looked at the uncolored pages of White Knight that are included in my version of the book and realized that I was a huge fucking idiot. No, okay, obviously I already knew that I'm a huge fucking idiot, but my point is that it would have really helped in the inking process if I had looked at the uncolored pages more. You can see way more details in the ink than with the colors on top of them. For example, I noticed that Murphy doesn't always use true black. There are instances where you can see more grayish tones here and there. But whatever, it was too late at that point. I'm just gonna ignore it. It's just good to know if I ever do something like this again. Look at the pure inks, idiot. What I also realised after this epiphany was that, obviously, Murphy does the borders of the panels with liquid ink as well. So I went ahead and worked a bit on my way to digital looking clean borders and put some holes in them, roughened them up a little, so to say. The very last thing I did was put a bunch of black sharpie on my index finger and thumb and press my fingerprints on a white sheet of paper. Now, I know this sounds very random, but hear me out. It took me years and years of owning this comic book to realise, but you can actually often spot Murphy's fingerprints on the pages. At first I thought it was accidental, because, you know, if you work with liquid ink like that, it can easily happen that you go back to work in when it's not fully dry yet, and then these fingerprints end up on your image. But now I believe that he does it intentionally, because it honestly gives this really cool look. I don't know though, maybe he talked about it at some point, but I haven't seen every single interview with him or listened to all the podcast episodes because there are a lot. Either way, I took a picture of my fingerprints and that paper and then just imported that into my Procreate file. Then I set the layer to multiply and erased the space around the prints. You don't spot them at first glance, but I tried to make it as natural as possible and place them near dark spaces. So, wow. You really sat through this entire video. That's pretty cool, thank you. I know I made it sound really painful towards the end, and don't get me wrong, it was, but I'm also immensely proud of myself, if I can say that. Not only because I think it looks pretty nice, but also because I was <laughs> this close to just abandoning it a couple of times out of frustration. Normally I don't finish stuff that takes me longer than two months, and I'm really glad that I pulled through with this. Speaking of time, I'll now reveal the amount of hours it took to make this. Drum roll, please. <laughs> that is literally the longest I've ever worked on anything. The fucking time lapse recording is 32 minutes long. Is 
it's, uh, it's, uh, it's just crazy. On top of everything, I was just also interested to study someone's style so closely and funnily enough it made me realise how many things in my own style came from reading White Knight over and over again when I was starting out with art. I unlocked these ancient memories of making White Knight fan art and trying to copy Murphy's style when I was learning how to draw. And now that I think about it, the story I'm writing and the OCs I have also partly started out as White Knight fan fiction, so... <laughs> Wow, okay, I actually completely forgot about that, lol. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, it means a lot to me. You have a strong will for sitting through such a long time of me just talking and fangirling about this silly little comic I like. I will now finally leave and make way for a slightly more rested FMG to do a dramatic reading of the scene I just drew for 40 fucking hours! Can you believe that? 40 hours! No wonder my data storage is full, this beast was eating it all up, the fucking file of this thing is... Yo, wanna hear this super funny story? Um, you know how I usually upload on Sundays? Uh, <laughs> well, this was uploaded on a Monday because guess what? I fell down the fucking stairs. So I was basically in the hospital for like half the day. So I couldn't fucking finish this. Um, uh, yeah, it, it, it's a funny story, right? I told you it would be funny. Uh, <laughs> anyway, I'm okay. My foot just hurts a little bit much, but I'm fine. Thank you so much for watching the video. Have a great day. <laughs> Love you.